Hi everyone, this is Larian Andrade Vicente. I'm part of the MD class of 2021. And this is a short sketch on urea plasma and mycoplasma species. These are sets of species that weren't really covered during sketchy medical, but I did encounter them during my step one studying. And so here we are. Urea plasma ureoliticum is represented in the sketch by the flowing urine here in yellow and the interrupted stream for the lyticum portion of the name. These bugs are part of the Mycoplasmodicy family. And we have Mycoplasma species, uh, the Mycoplasma genitalium, represented by the genitals here on this gentleman urinating. Of course, I did not be so graphic as to show you the genitals, but you can use your imagination and that they are there. We also have Ureoplasma parvum, which is only distinguishable from Ureoplasma ureoliticum via PCR. And so we're representing that species by uh, the parfum or the perfume within the stall here. All of these bugs are urease positive as represented by the NH3 bottle. The no male homin sign on the bathroom door represents Mycoplasma hominis. All of these bugs are part of the normal genital flora and I will reiterate that the urea plasma as well as the um, Mycoplasma hominis, they're all part of the Mycoplasma modesty family. The bugs in this family have no cell walls, so you'll notice there are no cell, there are no wall lines within this bathroom. And they do not gram stain because of that. And they have cholesterol in their membrane, so you'll notice that we have this sort of cholesterol structure within this net that is on top of this door. The pathogenicity of these bugs is questionable, but many conclude that urea plasma as well as M. genitalium are a cause of urethritis, particularly in males. So we have this male urinating into this, into this bowl while screaming in pain here. They also can cause other UTIs. These bugs cause what you would call sterile pyuria. And so we have the keep sterile sign on the bathroom stall to remind us of that. And they call the sterile pyuria not because you can't culture them per se, but because typical cultures in hospitals don't pick them up. Of course, when you hear sterile pyuria on step one, you should be thinking about chlamydia trachomatis as the first thought. But other causes include these bugs, taking antibiotics, and accidental sterilization of your urine cup. For example, with the cloth wipes that you use to Clean yourself before you urinate. All can cause endometritis, which is usually a polymicrobial infection, and that is represented here by the crying uterus, and I hope you will apologize. Rather, I hope you will forgive me for the police siren in the background. Only M. hominis and M. genitalium cause PID, and that is represented by the crying uterus with the flames around it for pelvic inflammatory disease. And it is chained in here to represent the fact that only the mycoplasma hominis and genitalium cause these uh, pelvic inflammatory disease. In the immunocompromise, you can get a set of symptoms that aren't really related to UTIs. These extra genital symptoms uh, include sepsis, pneumonia, um, meningoencephalitis or new onset arthritis, but also endocarditis and osteo. Lower yield, don't pay too much mind to this part of the lecture, but uh, the arthritis is represented by these little squiggly lines coming from the knees. We have the osteomyelitis bone fish here for representing the bone infection, as well as the Spartan hat here representing the meningoencephalitis that you can get, and the pneumonia represented by these lungs strewn onto the bathroom stall. Endocarditis is not represented here, but of course, if you have bacteremia, then of course you can get endocarditis with this. Uh, in the neonate, they can also rarely cause bacteremia, pneumonia, meningoencephalitis, and abscess. Often, uh, if it is going to occur, again, it's rare, but if it is occurred, it often occurs in the preemies that uh, develop bronchopulmonary dysplasia. And that's not represented on this image. The post-transplant hyperammonemia patient, usually a lung transplant, is a rare but potentially fatal complication uh, caused by ureoplasma or mycoplasma hominis. You always need to look for these pathogens if the patient has hyperammonemia post-transplant, and that brings us to how we diagnose this. P. 
PCR, PCR. You'll notice the PCR chains that are representing that. And just to go back for a second, you'll notice that NH3 graffiti on the uh, bathroom stall and the yellow for the urine um, for post-transplant hyperammonemia. Okay, but again, diagnosed with PCR, but you can also culture it, but you wouldn't do that because it takes five days or two weeks respectively. But if you were to do it, you can culture with SP4 um, or 10B bra. So I have status post use keep sterile for SP4 and 10B limit for a 10 person limit for this stall. Big, big limit, huh? I mean, a lot of people could fit in there. Okay. The treatment for this is tetracycline that's represented by this cap, the uh, captain's wheel that is going to be how you flush this toilet. Um, and the, the it either could be tetracycline or doxycycline. Clinda doesn't work on urea plasma. I know that's usually a treatment for endometritis, which is why I'm telling you that that doesn't work for urea plasma. Finally, a second line option or first line option for urea plasma would be a macrolide, and that's represented by the macrolide Crow. Okay, just to summarize, urea plasma urolyticum, urea plasma parvum, only distinguishable by PCR, and then the mycoplasma genitalium and hominis, often called UTIs, but are, are all part of the normal genital flora, and their pathogenicity is questionable, but uh, many people agree that they can cause types of UTIs. All of them can cause endometritis, and hominis and genitalium can cause pelvic inflammatory disease. They will cause sterile pyuria because typical cultures won't pick them up. You have to specifically check for them via PCR if you are suspecting an infection with one of these bugs or an overgrowth with one of these bugs. And the treatment is uh, tetracycline, such as doxy or, or tetracycline. Um, and you can use a macrolide if you want to treat for urea plasma species. Have a great day, folks.